I'm going to show you a basic project workflow. So this is mean this is with this I mean uh, getting stuff done starting from an idea to code that follows that idea. And we're using a uh, the setup of this repository here. It's a Tres and Formal repository. Tres and Formal is a programming team. Basketball is the latest thing they're working on. It's a basketball game. They have branches and they have some some ideas about how you should do things. And that idea how you should do things, I'll this, I'll show you here. So let's take a look at the big picture of the first step going from a design document to a GitHub issue. So if I just scroll down on the main page, you see a bit of an overview how the team does this. So they have a game design document, which is created by the game designers. Uh, they are a boss about the game design document. They design the game, they are the game designers. And that's a non-technical document in English. So there shouldn't be much code here, it should be described in English. Everyone that can read English should be able to read it. However, these things must be programmed and the way we use to put this into work is we convert them into issues. So an issue can be more technical. It starts from what's in the game design document and making it come true uh, by writing the test to make that needs to be true for it to be true. So if the game document says A, then an issue writes the test to check if A has is been in. And that's what the lead developer goes about. He or she can develop the architecture, how we're going to do this in practice and code. Uh, but it should always start with a test, or nearly always should start with a test. And I'm going to show you this first step now. Um, I'll be using Git, uh, uh, Git and uh, I won't explain the steps anymore much. So there's a file called readme.md which is just the main file we, we work in. The font is super big. And what I need to do is, is, is to write uh, a design document line. So here we see a bit of text. The game design document is written in English. Ideally, each sentence is SMAR, from SMART criteria, so that means specific, measurable, assignable, relevant. And it should be linked to at least one issue. And the game designers decide what is in the game design document and not. And we'll discuss what are good issues uh, below down, below in this lower in this document what an issue is. But it's a technical version of, of the document. We've all, the game design document already has some things. For example, there's an there's an issue there's a design statement that says that the game finishes when one player reaches 20 points and this is connected to technical issue 23 and uh, the game has two players and this is linked to issue 11 the game has one basket so this is all very trivial maybe but you see that we directly make the connection between a piece of English text and the technical representation of it all objects follow the laws of gravity and we start with doing this for the basketball. So here you see that we split up a bigger issue, that all ob objects should follow the laws of gravity, and uh, that is, they fall down. And we split it up in the basketball and others, because also players will follow the laws of gravity. Maybe there are other things in the game that follow the laws of gravity. Um, so we just make an issue only for the basketball, but in the future we'll be making an issue for the players, for example. And here's one line. There's an option to play on one side or two sides. So this is what is in the game design document. And I'll be adding a new option. What I want to add is, so it should be specific, so the ball, the one ball, so it's one ball, starts at the top center of the screen. So I feel that this is specific, measurable, assignable. Let's take a look at the issue. I'll move this line up a bit. So I feel this is quite 
specific. You can definitely measure it because you can get the coordinates of the ball. Um, assign a ball means that you can make it come true. You can say give it to people, and it's relevant. Of, it's relevant to the game where the, the player starts. So I feel this is a good game design document line. So I just put it here, or maybe I put it here. I put it here. The game has one basketball, and I use comma. Nah, I just leave it like that. The one ball that's at the top center of the screen. So I'm going to add this. Uh, so in theory, I could add this with a pull request, and the game designers will veto this. Um, in the end of this video, I will throw this away, so it it won't be uh, so so it won't be bothered with them. I'm just going to check it in in uh, Git and Git commit ball must start at the top center of the screen. Um, I work on the on my own branch, the reshell branch, so it doesn't even go up. But would I want this to be really in the game design document? I would now make a pull request to develop. I would assign the game developers to veto this, to, to accept it yes or no. Uh, and then I would start creating an issue from it. But we're gonna step this we're gonna skip that step. We've created the design document. From this, we're now going to make a GitHub issue. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's take this, the, the line of text I just wrote. Here, the one ball starts at the top center of the screen. So I go to the GitHub repository. I go to issues. And I'm going to put it there. The one ball starts at the top center of the screen. I feel that there's not much to describe um, anymore, so I just paste it again. Maybe there will be more information. I submit this as an issue. And now I have an issue number, issue 25. So I have a URL here. I'm going to model add this to the design document. So in Markdown, you use this syntax for a link. Use the the, the square braces and the round braces, the URL goes in the last part, the text goes into the first part, and now we have a nice link to our design document lines. So and we've made the first connection already. Git add git commit. And I'm gonna call this like link design document line to twenty-five. Like if you use hashtag 25, it'll be automatically connected. Let's take a look at the issue. If I press refresh now, you'll see that it's that the commit is automatically added here. So now we have a game design document and an issue. The next step is to turn this into pseudocode. So the design document is done. So we assume that the, the game designers accepted this. Um, this is now an issue. We, there's, there's no code being written yet, but this is the first start of being getting into more technical details. So let's write the GitHub issue with pseudocode. Um, because we are going to write use this as a next step to write test code. You can immediately start with writing test code, um, but we um, I, I will show the step in between uh, because most beginner programmers they like to, to do it in steps. They they don't fully feel how functions and classes work. So I'm just writing pseudocode first. And we can put the pseudocode in an in a comment on the issue or we're gonna add it to the, the main thing. It it doesn't matter too much. So I'm gonna write a test pseudocode. Um, and I'm going to put it in code blocks. So these three backticks means this is code. You can already see it in preview, or you can't see it in preview yet. But you see that the text is rendered in, in a codey way. So what I'm going to do is I want to create a game. So a game is the game logic. It's a class that holds the game logic. Get, create a game, get the ball position, get the intended 
screen width. Yeah, get the world. Yeah, so this is a bit of a problem. Get the intended screen width because game I just said this contains the law, the game logic. Um, so the width of the screen is not part of the game logic. You could argue, but we do need to know that, like the size of the arena. We do need to know the. We will have to limit it in some ways. So I'm going to call this intended screen screen width anyways, uh, because we need a number. Um, and then if we have the screen width, the ball position must be at coordinate 0, comma width divided by 2. The ball center position must be at the coordinate 0, comma width divided by 2. So the coordinate system is that the top left will be the origin, so coordinate 0, comma 0. The first thing will be the x coordinate, so that's width divided by 2. So it goes half of the screen width to the right from the origin at the top left. And then it goes 0 down. And maybe this is already a problem because it means that half of the ball is sticking out of the screen. But let's start from here and see where it goes. We can always modify these things later, but this is a good start, I would say. Um, so what we see here in pseudocode is that we can clearly specify where we expect the ball to be. So I'm going to comment this, and here we've written the pseudocode for this test without doing any coding. Now it is time to convert the pseudocode to test code. Um, uh, you, what I'll be doing is I'll be doing this first in the, in, in the GitHub issue, then I'll be doing this in the code itself, and you'll see that I'll be really being very lazy on most things, uh, because I'll be expecting code to be there that is not there yet. But you'll see the test, test should be very simple. Uh, true test code will be, and you, I use the backticks again, I've used C++, it means it turns in C++. So I want a game object, I want a um, screen size object, get screen size of G. And, and notice, I just write this as if it already exists. I could, like, I don't know if there's a function that can get the screen size from a game. I don't know yet if it exists. If it doesn't exist yet, then we should it should be written. Um, so there's something coming out of this. I use auto. It's probably a, a, a screen size object. I could use a reference here if, I, if I'm very. Um, it's very precise, uh, maybe even pedantic. Uh, I just leave it out because we don't need to optimize in these kind of little tests anyways. Um, unless of course there's a tool that will complain. Um, let's get the ball coordinate. Get ball coordinate from the game. And maybe we should could get ball center get cent get ball center coordinate would be even better. So now we get off the ball the center coordinate. It's in the game. The, the game has a ball. Uh, the game has a screen size. So we can get those. And then we're going to say uh, assert. So we'll, we'll be using assert in these tests. We don't use a gra uh, testing framework. So we're going to assert that screen size. Oh, let's do something. Let's, let's just split it up a bit. Uh, screen width. is getting the width, get width, of the screen size. So that's also a function that probably doesn't exist. Half screen width. That is simply screen width divided by 2. So this should be the x coordinate of the ball's center. Const auto ball center x is getting the x of our ball coordinate. Ball center y 
is the get y of the ball coordinate. And now we can assert that the ball center x is equals half screen width. And we assert that the ball center y equals 0, 0. So here we have written the test in real code. But we, you see we've created quite some functions that, that don't exist yet. And maybe we don't need them uh, in all cases, or maybe they're redundant, maybe there are different ways. But we use functions all the time, we use free functions. And in C++ it's fine to make these kind of logistic functions, functions that do nothing but call another one. Uh, like probably if you have a coordinate you can get the i, uh, the y of that coordinate by using get y. This free function doesn't impose anything uh, on the architecture of ball coordinates, so they're very loosely coupled functions. So there's, there's still one problem here, and that is we should never compare floating points uh, together. So we could do something like uh, don't, so, so I'll add don't. So we could do something like that is more or less equal. So we could do like a function like this. So that's a function that says if two numbers are more or less equal. Don't remember, never compare floating point values to add some room for rounding errors. So even the test, I'm going to leave this out. So even the tests write functions that maybe need to be written. But um, I'm going to comment it. So uh, I did it. I wrote the tests that we need in, the, in this issue. So let's take a look where we are now. So now we have a GitHub issue with test code. And this test code is not sacred in any, by, by, uh, by any means. But we do gonna put it in the project, and maybe the, the code will change due to some reasons that it's it's not a clear arrow forward always. But we're gonna put it in the project. So we use a specific editor for this project. It's called Qt Creator. Um, it's good. I'm on the reshell branch. I just check if it runs. Yes, it says something. Um, what it says is not very relevant. So the question is, where am I going to put this test code? So the biggest class that is needed, as in the, the, the class that has all the information here, is game. So this will, needs to be put probably in the, in the tests of the game class. So we're going to see if there's a game class. Yeah, we have a game class. Here are the tests. It's a function called test game that tests all the games. And we're going to paste the code here. And uh, I don't like the indentation, so let's let's get the indentation correct. And select all pen. The problem with this approach is that you see that all tests are isolated by using th these brackets to give them their own scope. So I'm going to do that too. I'm going to put a round bracket at the beginning, round curly, uh, and then. Um, curly brace at the end and I'm going to indent and now we have an isolated test. Now already the compiler starts complaining that how, how to get the screen size and how to get the ball center coordinate and so on. Um, but I'm not focusing on that now. Like I have it now, I have it in the code. And uh, but I and I want to up upload it so my fellow programmers can work on it. The problem is, of course, that this code is actually expected to, to run at the moment. So we need to some way comment it out. So one way would be to, to, to do this, to do a multi-line comment. That is a way to do it. What we, however, do in this project is we use a, a standard 
uh, define statement uh, so you can use your preprocessor to comment it in or out um, but it's uh, maybe just as good so this issue is number 25 I can just leave this out. So if fix issue 25 is defined, then run the test. So the code is now in, but it doesn't run. There you see that uh, th this gray text, the grayness around the text means, hey, I'm not compiled at all. And if you want to work on it, then you say, well, I'm going to define this thing. And then suddenly the code, in this case, starts complaining, but this is how you can get your code to work. Um, and, and to make the test work. So I'm gonna upload this test. Git add. I usually use the word expose, git commit command expose 25, as in showing that there's a weakness. I'm gonna push it. So now I have a project with commented out test code. Now we're going to make this project have working test code and this is a step I'll be um, I'll be very simple with because I, I simply won't do this. Um, as in I'll be I'll be pretending suddenly we work on a different issue that has uh, commented out test code. So I'll show you. So we're going to assume that we worked on issue 11. So we have if dev issue 11 and if so we were working on issue 11 the test code was written by someone else and we got this to work. So if I run it it works nicely. So now we're going to pretend that this was what we were working on. So now have we have a project with working test code. Like we, we made the tests come true. And that means we can clean up this stuff. So now is it time to clean up and close this. Well, cleaning up is just removing these things. There. Uh, and I've saved it, so now I can commit it, git add it, git add commit fix 11, although it's already fixed, and uh, git push. And, well, nothing happened, because, well, nothing happened in the end, uh, but now I should, would have pushed the code of issue 11. This probably has to go through some code review. Um, I, I don't I don't do this here. Uh, then it's time to close the issue. So let's go to the issues. Issues. We go to issue eleven. Here is issue eleven, and then if you go to the bottom, we write done. So I can write this again, but I pretend that I just did issue eleven. So normally you write the reason why things are closed, like a done or don't think it's important. But in that way, um, the code is, is now clean and we have code that that has a new feature added. So this concludes the basic project workflow we do here with Transformal, where we start from a design document to having a test added that adds this new feature and then cleaning it up and closing the issue. Um, I'll leave it at there, and I wish you a very good day. Bye!